I'm going to trim it so it fits in a little bit more snug. So that's the overall difference. That's good enough like that. Flange. Got to go here. As you probably already guessed, the bobber is getting two turbos, one each side I reckon. If you haven't seen the previous video where I tell you a little bit about this turbo, this is the world's smallest production turbo. It's a VZ21, also known as an RHB31. So I decided when I was thinking about turbocharging this and researching it that all the turbos were way too big really. So and one of these is too small on its own. So I decided to go the twin turbo route. And eventually I might even leave the supercharger on there as well. That's gonna be interesting. The first video was a little bit of a tease just to get you intrigued as to what was gonna happen. But today we're gonna to actually start work on it and I'm gonna start building the hot side out of scrap metal. I've actually organized my scrap metal pile <laughs> which used to be a pile on the floor in the corner there. Now it's all on um, shelving and stuff. I always try and keep useful stuff, especially tubing and all sorts of things I think come in necessary for building stuff. So I've always been collecting nuts and bolts while I was a mechanic and stuff and big bits of steel. I've got my aluminium bin there, where it's actually a box and other stuff. So I've actually been sorting out my workshop area and stuff a bit as well as an ongoing development to help <laughs> do better things and bring you better content. This is something I grabbed a while back. It's an adjustable table leg out of a caravan. So this table leg is the same size as the exhaust header. On the bobber. I picked up several of these because I knew they were the right size. I was actually going to use them and pie cut them and make them into actual headers so I could do away with my X pipe, but they're going to be used for this now. This bit of exhaust pipe here is a good size to actually transition down into the inlet for the exhaust turbine on the turbo because that's a lot smaller than this. So somehow I've got to make my initial flange out of this and get it down to this sort of size, which is still a little bit bigger than this inlet, but there's so much meat around here, I can actually port that a little bit just to make the transition a little bit smoother. The turbo did come with gaskets. So what we're gonna do, I say we when we're doing this stuff because you're along here with me, following me on the journey doing this. I don't know how it's gonna work out, so you're gonna find out a very similar time to what I am. That's why this is in a playlist in a series. So make sure you subscribe and hit the little bell icon so you know when another video is coming out. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this flange, it's not a flange, gasket, as a template for the flange. Hopefully gonna get two out of this piece of scrap. Oh, are we? No, I'm gonna have to find another bit. So the first thing I need to do is replicate this little bit of a header here so I can get my Lambda probe in it and I've got the flange on it to pull it tight against the seal. So I need to get some sort of ring around this tubing. I was actually gonna cut out a piece of flat steel and do it, but <laughs> that seems so time consuming. So luckily, when I was working for VW, used to collect all the shims when I did clutches on DSG gearboxes, <laughs> like this guy here, and this one here. 
He's a little bit smaller than the pipe, but what I can do is just cut it and open it up a bit and that should go on there. And that's a clamp for pulling it onto the head. So, that looks like it's gonna be a good size. I've cleaned this piece of metal up with a um, zip wheel, which is really good for cleaning it off without scratching it. So you can actually, well it does scratch it a bit, but you can actually paint it straight after that rather than having to really sand it down or anything like that. Go on, you've got to go on there. There you go. That's what you want. Something like that. And I'll measure it the required distance. I'll just tap that so I get the required distance there. And give it a bit of welding. Just tap that on there. So I got that welded on there, and now the exhaust flange, if I did it in the right way, should go on there like that. And there's my gap for the lambda probe. So I've got to weld a bung into there. And instead of actually buying expensive proper bungs, I just go to the hardware store, or super cheap in this case, and get a nut of the equivalent size. And I'm gonna weld that in there like that. After drilling a hole, of course. Well, that went all right, considering my past history of drilling holes. As you can see, the probe sticks right out of that nut, so I don't need to grind the nut down. That's good enough like that. I've ground the plate in off of the nut, so it welds better and it's probably poisonous as well. And then I've also ground a concave sort of shape in it to, so it sits on the tube a bit better. Where is it? There. And I've got the bolt in it to hold it in the right place while I tack it. Well, actually, I'll leave the bolt in there because otherwise you get splatter from the welds go into the threads. So I have now got my exhaust clamping flange made. Um, no, I'm not gonna start it up because it's got all that in the end there still. I've now got quite a bit of figuring out to do because I need to get this guy on the end of this. I'm going to do it on this side because in the future I might want to leave a supercharger on here with it, all this setup. So I'm going to build it now so that, that fits rather than taking it off and putting the turbo down here or something. So I don't want them out too far or too far forwards. And I need that to point down towards the intercooler and merge with the other one somehow. So I've got to figure out all this, where this is going to go, and the exhaust has got to come out here. I probably want it to come out and round and in, back into the X-pipe, maybe. Um, yeah, it's all going to need a lot of thinking about, so I'm not going to do that just yet. You can do this with a normal drill if you don't have a drill press, but I've got a drill press, so I'm using it for a change. Using a normal drill, I'd drill a pilot hole first with a little drill. Works alright, it's just a lot more effort. I've probably made this flange a bit small, really. But for demonstration purposes, we'll carry on. I should really do this in white so I can see it a lot better, but I can't find my white pen.
this is how you do it if you don't want to spend the time actually drilling that hole and then grinding it out or finding a hole saw which will actually cut through this do it like this That is the best thing I've ever bought. 20 years ago I bought that, my Ryobi gasless mid welder. Because I've just ran out of gas for my other welder, and I was struggling with it anyway because I ran out of CO2 and I was using argon. So it wasn't welding very well, it was pissing me off a bit. So that's welded back together. It's nice and flat. <laughs> The hole's not real good, but we'll sort that out now. I've got the gasket bolted on there as a guide, and we're gonna use a rotary file in a drill. These are better off in a die grinder, but I don't have one, but a drill does work, it's just a bit slower. What I'm gonna do now is bolt that to the hot side and we're going to port that to make that a little bit smoother because this bit of pipe is quite a bit bigger than that. So we're just going to put a little radius on there, we're not going to go silly. And you can see how small this turbo really is now I've got it apart. So that's the overall difference, which isn't much at all. And it's a much better size for the piece of pipe I'm using. It's my beautiful exhaust flange. It's not the prettiest thing in the world, but it's an exhaust flange. And this is just the first one just for the mock-up. So I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on it until I know it works, because all this is probably gonna have to be remade again. So, and it's gonna have to be chopped apart maybe, and who knows what's gonna happen to it. So there's no point going to town on it yet. So next stage is to get the tubing welded onto there. I'd need to, I want to get this as short as possible, but you've got to be careful. There's going to be a bend here or an angle and you've got to be careful because you need to get your bolts in to fit it to the actual turbocharger. Right, so that's on. I did actually, well, I was just going to tack it, but then I decided once I got the other bit welded on, it'd be difficult to get around to weld it. So I welded the whole lot and ground it down so I could get the bolts in. So that needs to go there somewhere and that pipe's got to join in with that because that's a smaller bore pipe than that I figure it's much smaller if you're butting them together this way but if that goes in that way and I squeeze this down a bit it should work out pretty close you'll see what I mean later so now I want that sort of angle like that I've just got to work out the angle that's that, and I know this is going to be straight, fair enough, so I can I can cut that at an angle there and mark the angle I want to squeeze it at, and it should all be good. You'll see what I mean. I've notched that out and I've trimmed this off, and as you can see, it should go in something like that. And because of the angle, the difference of the size of the pipes has been made up a bit, so I've only got to do a little bit of bending and bashing to get it right. And that's going to sit somewhere like that. I'm going to trim it so it fits in a little bit more snug. The only thing I've got to worry about is getting these bolts in. And it's looking pretty good. I've just got to keep grinding away and, and creeping up at it. And then when I've got it in a good place, then I can mark this tube so I can cut it away here. I've tacked that on there, and you can see what I mean about the size of the pipe being taken up by the angle. So I've just got to clean all this up, mark this in a bit, and then grind that away so it's actually got a hole there, because it's not going to flow very well like that. And just gradually <laughs> shape it up and weld it. It's not the nicest transition, 
not very smooth, but I think it'll work. So it's getting there. I've just got to keep welding and grinding and tapping and it should all come together. And that's what I've come up with. It actually looks pretty good. Right, well that's this side mounted. It's pretty good. That's pointing in a good place. I can get to all the bolts really easily. The exhaust should come out and hopefully down here and then I don't know if you can see that. Where's the X-pipe there? Into the X-pipe, maybe? Or just straight out here? <laughs> but we'll see. So, time to get the other one on. That's been a bit greedy for power adders. The next stage for it is to plumb in the oil feed and the oil drain. That's going to take a little bit of time messing about getting bits and pieces. I'm waiting for parts at the moment. I've actually ordered some flanges for the turbo, so I'll show you what the proper flanges you can order are. I'll show you how to make them because it's cheap and you don't have to wait for parts to turn up. So <laughs> that's an option because the parts aren't that expensive, but when you've got lots and lots of parts which aren't all that expensive, it all adds up. And I like to show people how it can be done without using all the expensive tools and equipment like CNC machines or paying someone else to do it for you. So I've got to make the exhaust for it as well. I'm probably going to leave the supercharger on to do that so that I can use the same exhaust for when I've got the supercharger on. But I will be taking the supercharger off to initially sort out this twin turbo system. If you're new to the channel, there's a complete playlist all about how I fit the supercharger and all about that. So go and check that out. Let me know if there's anything you'd like answered and feel free to comment. It helps me out too. I've got to make charge pipes for it. And then once all that's done, that's pretty much it really. I'm taking the turbos off again now. I've got my normal exhaust back on it because I'm probably going to drags next week. So it's not going to be ready with turbos and stuff in time for that. It's going to be a bit of messing about getting hold of materials and parts and stuff. So stay tuned and keep up with the progress. Have a great day. Take a bit more out.